This is the best place in town to be. I feel like the dryness. In a quiet corner of a Carlisle industrial estate, Dale shows us into a railway arch that he says he calls home. We're living in squalor. Though few would agree it's a place deserving of such a title. Oh, one on that couch. Two, three, four, five. He counts the number of people he says regularly sleep here too. The signs are among the beds and broken chairs. It's recently been damaged and Dale says they fear violence every single day. Someone just smashed it up because I don't want the homeless lot about. But he says he has little choice. Dale was staying at a hostel which was flooded in December. He'd been there since being released from jail and has been trying to beat a drug addiction. Efforts to rehouse him have been unsuccessful and he has been sleeping rough off and on for months. All I want is a roof on it. A flat or a house. Two bedroom dolls or a two bedroom flat or something. You've, you said before you want to get your life yeah, get on track. Life back to normal, get back to work and that. Sort myself out. Can't do that with being homeless. It's just a nightmare. Dale was one of 21 residents at the men only John Street hostel in Colgate. Flood damage affected the entire ground floor and it's not set to reopen until early next year. It's run by Carlisle City Council, which provides beds for homeless people in the short term. The idea is for them to get on their feet and then move on to supported living or private rentals. The council says it is fulfilling its legal obligation in providing alternative temporary accommodation for the men who would normally stay here. But speaking to people who work in the sector, it seems that bed space is still at a premium right across the city and a lot of private accommodation is still taken up by other flood victims. So is the result of that then that some people are falling between the cracks? The department in charge says it has tried to help everyone affected. All the individuals were assisted within two days to find alternative accommodation by talking to our partners within the homelessness sector and all of those who wanted that help were given the help. You say reopening the hostel is a priority. Why is it taking so long? Well, first of all, there's the need to have discussions with the insurance company and then loss adjusters have to inspect the damage and there's discussion between council officers and the loss adjusters to see what is covered and what is not covered under the insurance. The building has to dry out. While no one is supposed to stay at the hostel permanently, the danger is with losing it is that it breaks people's routines and sets them back from finding more permanent places to live. Helping people do that falls to various charities and organisations. Carlisle Key is helping some of the under 25s. It says everyone in this area is working as hard as they can, but the lack of bed space means some are having a longer period of homelessness than they would have before the floods. I think it's the most vulnerable that have been impacted, not so directly from the floods, but it's indirectly from the floods. So we've had it where everybody who was flooded had to go into some sort of rented accommodation. Well, now there, is, there just isn't any rented accommodation for the young people that we're working with. And there definitely isn't any rented accommodation for people that on housing benefit is very, very limited. Right. Alongside the handful of people sleeping rough, there is also a bigger hidden problem. Those like David who do have a roof over their heads of sorts. He's currently in his son's living room because he's not been able to secure anywhere to live despite the city council saying it has tried to help him. Here, on the sofa. That's, that's my full existence. I don't sleep very much, to be honest. It, it's more a case of uh, just dozing. And consequently, I'm always tired. Uh, it's better than Bits Park, I suppose. He can't work at the moment as he's suffering a heart condition and ended up in the hostel after being evicted from his previous home for breaching their alcohol ban. He feels like he's out of options. I'm obviously upset, but disappointed as well because I, 
I've never asked anybody for anything in my whole life and now when I do need some help, it's not there. But he's determined to get his own place and get off his son's sofa. It's a bit like uh, a role reversal, um, to be honest, whereas I'm his dad, but he's in charge. And what's that like? It's a bit degrading, to be honest. You know, you expect to be able to, like, look after your own children. And I can't even look after myself, never mind my children. Perhaps more people getting back into their homes will help people like David and Dale. Perhaps despite best efforts, some will end up on the streets. One thing is for certain, those with the least can be the ones who end up losing the most. Hannah McNulty, ITV News, Carlisle. Yes, they will. And unfortunately, the reality is that homelessness is rising across England in all parts of the country. And rising homelessness is not just a problem in London and the South East, um, but as I say, across, across the country. So in the last year, we've seen a 9% increase in people getting help from their council and when they've approached because they're homeless. And we've seen a 30% increase in rough sleeping. And given that there's an increase generally across the country in an area which was affected as we've seen by the flooding each of the men we've met in our report have been in accommodation that was affected by the floods um, they were hoping to be there on a temporary basis that just compounds the problem doesn't it it's the shortage of accommodation Yes, it absolutely does. And while the flooding is an unusual event, obviously something like this really hits the most vulnerable the hardest. Um, but what we've seen across England is that actually the, uh, the leading cause for people uh, becoming homeless now is actually the loss of a private rented home. And part of that um, is because there is a, a, se a severe shortage of accommodation, but also when people are housed, that that accommodation is increasingly insecure and people are really struggling to pay their rent. Mm -hmm. And people are just looking for the next stepping stone to stand onto for a while. Is it a case that there is a series of short term solutions is the best people can hope for? Or is there a long term solution out there? Well, we think that in the long term, prevention is better than cure. And that's particularly the case when it comes to homelessness. And that's why we're working with MPs and with government to change the law as it stands in England. Far too often, people who approach the Council for Help, particularly single homeless people, uh, simply won't get the help that they need. And we really think that that needs to change. Is that a case of efficiency then? There's a lot of people out there who are trying to help people, lots of little pockets who rely on their own funding. Do you think working together there could be a more efficient system? Well, absolutely. We think there can be a more efficient system. The reality is that for a lo lot of local councils and for charities that are really trying to help people, that they're being asked to do more with less because of severe funding pressures, cuts to uh, cuts to, to their funding. And so, for instance, when we look at the number of hostel bed spaces that are available on any given night, just one in 10 are likely to be available for those who need them. And that number is steadily declining because of cuts. Okay, Alice Ashworth from Crisis, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.